Ram, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. You've written 16 books, I think, right? A lot of it on leadership. What's your definition of leadership? See, the key point here is that leadership has been taught for centuries. Mm -hmm. Leadership of military is different. Leadership of politics is different. Leadership of business is different. And how so? The reason is that in business, leadership is to lead other people to get things done that create value. In the other disciplines, it has different outputs. Could you give us some examples? Yeah, in the case of politics, yeah. a leader is to lead the total nation okay. against all external circumstances. And there, the output is different. Okay. There, the tools are different. Okay. Here, in business, the tools are different. So the output is different, but is the characteristics of leaders generally the same, or is different? Yeah, one has to be very careful of okay. this. Some characteristics are common, then others begin to differ. For example, a character, an energy, liking people, motivating people, authenticity, they are common. Okay. After that, different disciplines of human endeavor, different traits of leadership, and in the same endeavor at different times, Different mm -hmm. traits become more important. Okay, so these are on the technical technical side no, of things, not just that. Also, no, they're personality traits. Personality, okay. Even the personality traits become very, very crucial, okay. depending upon what phase a company is in, what phase a nation is in, okay. Okay. what phase a military is in, because there are so many things in a human being that nobody's going to be perfect. And you better not try to be perfect. So a successful politician or a successful businessman may not necessarily be a successful politician. I would go further. Okay. A successful businessman today in a kind of business A may not be successful today in a kind of business B. Okay. And, and that is because of that personality? Partly character. personality, partly skills. Let me give you a simple example. Mm -hmm. We are well known. Many people in the American scene who spend a lot of their lives in cost-cutting, 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 they have great difficulty growing the business organically. Skills, personality, risk-taking, observing a consumer, they are different. Okay. Can they learn this? I mean, can they grow into... I think people have to come to terms with a fundamental issue. And that is, every one of us has certain things we like, certain things we don't like. Go where you like. So here, find out what's your calling mm -hmm. early, mm -hmm. and practice the hell out okay. early, repetitively, okay. you become successful. Okay. And, I mean, By the time you're 22, 23, 24, mm -hmm. you demonstrate those likings. It doesn't matter whether you were born or not. Mm -hmm. You don't ask a champion golf player to play tennis. You will ruin both. Let's talk about your calling. I mean, you talked about this whole thing about calling, right? Yeah. Uh, you seem to have a calling to help fix business problems uh, or be a teacher. I think you've mentioned that before. Teacher, yes. Um, how did you find your calling? Well, mine was very simple. That I had learned the business at the shoe shop. Okay. And then I went to engineering college. And the, my class fellows will come and ask me questions and learn from me. And then I went to Australia. And then somebody said, you go and teach part-time at the university, which I did. And then I came to Harvard Business School, and one of my instructors asked me to teach a class for him. So it just began to came out. So I was actually going to be an executive VP of a company after I graduated. But the school asked me to come and do the doctor program. Right. And I was obliged to spend five years teaching. So that's why I stayed there. But mine was basically, is not even the teaching. Mine was, is to how help others to solve problems. And in that teaching, in a way, you found that, call, you that people can take something home. My right. teaching is not developing some fancy ideas. Right. My teaching is how do I take very complex issues, mm -hmm. very complex tools, yep. and how do you make them practical? And, and how do you do that? How do you well, make them that's practical? That's the part is you always work backwards. And the backward, you start with, in my case, what the customer need is. Okay. In my case, what are the difficulties? In my case, which problems are the most difficult? If they don't get solved, they don't get the solution. Okay. And you work backwards. 
many of us have solutions looking for problems. Mm -hmm. I go the other way. Right. And I'll tell you straight out, I don't know a solution. We'll find somebody who will help us get a solution. When you start an assignment, you really come with no preconceived notions. Oh, absolutely. No Even okay. in some companies, I will go without reading your balance sheet. There's a reason for it. Not that I can't. When I talk to the CEO, I am extracting information out of him or her. Okay. But in the process of ex extracting information, I'm learning what is his frame of reference. Okay. What is he saying, what he's not saying, mm. what is overemphasizing, what is underemphasizing. Mm -hmm. And that's very important to get to know what's happening. Okay. Because every one of us has a blind side. Okay. And, and is that why CEOs like to use you as their sounding board? Because you, you seem to be the most popular no, choice. No, it's not the popular. It's, it's get to earn your keep every day. Okay. It is being honest with them. That is the key working with anybody, whether you are a, 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 a junior person or a senior person. You've got to be honest. Mm -hmm. You understand something, you don't understand something, or you're able to say in private, this is not going to work for you, right. go this way or that way. So I was with a businessman in India about three weeks ago, and he showed me uh, three possibilities to launch. Okay. And the third possibility was very attractive. And as we were finishing, I said to him, you know, there's something disturbing me in it. He said, think it over. So I called him 48 hours later from New York, and I said, I don't think I'll do it, even though it's very profitable. Mm. He may still do it, right. but he got an honest opinion and a reason for it. And, and do they value, I mean, many times we, we hear of CEOs trying to shy away from being honest. Being Not with me. Okay. Because I have developed over time, and I still miss it is that, that I want them to get to confront the reality. Okay. So long as they give me the time, I'll get them there. I'm sure you've met tons of business leaders and consulted with them. You know, in your mind, do you rate them? Uh, and do you say, this, this guy is the best? And, and no, I think I learned something early, very early in Australia. And that is the the skill is to see how good is the fit of the person with the demands of the job. Okay. So I have been able to predict which people will not last on the job ahead of time. Okay. But the fit is not there. Okay. But they're good people and they can be fitted elsewhere. Okay. Now, when it comes to learning, I say to you that I learn more from Roshan than from Joe. Area A, I can learn from Roshan better mm -hmm. than area, area B. From Joe. Makes sense. So that's the way I work at it. Okay, okay. And do you have a favorite CEO that you uh, look up to or you think is exemplifies? There are a number of them. Number of them. Uh, many of them are not CEOs anymore. Okay. Maybe you can share. Uh, for share. example, uh, and why? in Australia, his, this young man has passed away. He was number two guy in the company. And I look forward to him. And he spent four hours with me every two weeks. Okay. And the key was that. I could debate with him when I'm 20 years of age and he's number two man in this large company mm. and be able to extract the clarity. So that was my a kind of a mentor. Yeah. But I could talk anything of business mm. and yet I was an engineering assistant. And he was very surprised Fantastic. that I could talk business with him and be able to do that. To give you one example, he called me up one day big man, big shot, it's white Australia policy, and I'm scared to death. <laughs> and he says, you've been in the company six months, what do you think is going on here? And I said, I believe that you're borrowing money to pay dividends. And he said, no, mm. I'm scared to death. I said, I'm through. Right. He said, no, wait a minute. So he picks up the phone, called the CFO of the company, and the CFO tells him that's truth. Yep. I said, well, how did you know? I said, just common sense. And so those were the learning things for me. Mm. So I have this in my life every year. Right. At least half a dozen of these, if not a dozen, yep. that I like to seek and learn. And they give me time. Yep. So nobody has denied time for me. Fantastic. You know, one of the books that, that really is interesting, you know, is this whole leadership pipeline. Uh, and many, I mean, many companies have challenges really in building succession and, and leadership pipeline in the organization. Why is that? And how do we go about uh, yeah. building such a pipeline? I think there's are some very fundamental things. A leader is not a great leader who does not develop other leaders. And I've known this from the childhood. Because your highest leverage is other leaders. Okay. And the job of a leader 
is to decide the it and get it done, but mm -hmm. don't do. Okay. So to do that, we have to have leaders investing 25% of their time in spotting other leaders, developing other leaders, and deploying other leaders. So now in my research, I'm just finishing up mm. with Bill Connerty okay, from GE. as the lead, lead author, yep. that we are now making developing leaders as a part of evaluation of leaders. Okay. It may be subjective, and it is, but we can force rank who is mm -hmm. doing, who is not. Mm -hmm. We're not doing the whole company. We're doing the top two layers in every company that is coming into it. Right. So this may be identifying who are leaders. Now, be careful on one thing. There are leaders who have leadership characteristics but have not developed like the athletes to become champions mm. because they don't have enough skills. I see.